Hello everyone, it's Gabriella from Pour La Victoire. Today I wanted to show you how I include a sewing studio inside a tiny space, specifically my bedroom. Um, I'm sure you've seen the increased popularity of tiny living that's been circulating lately. Interest in small homes, eco-friendly spaces, multi-purpose furniture, living off the grid even, surrounding yourself only with things that bring you joy. <laughs> Um, while I appreciate all of the benefits of tiny living, it's very hard to imagine tiny living with a hobby. I feel like a lot of the tiny living shows that I see, I, people's hobby must be watching Netflix on an iPad because there's not really room in their apartments to do much else. Today I wanted to show you how I include a sewing space in my very small New York City bedroom. A little bit of background, I live in a two bedroom apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. My bedroom is considered large by New York City standards and I confine all of my belongings into my bedroom and that includes all of the supplies for sewing. It includes all of my fabric, all my patterns, all of the things that I sew, all of my historical footwear and bonnets into this space. So stay tuned if you want to see how I incorporate a sewing studio inside my tiny space. So when I was planning what furniture I could fit into my space before I moved, I realized that any piece of furniture I put in had to serve multiple functions because I just didn't have room for a lot of pieces of furniture and I had to keep all of my stuff condensed into this one space. I went to Ikea, which is my go-to for space saving solutions. I love Ikea. I can wax poetic about Ikea any day. Um, and one of the things I got was actually this desk. Um, the drawer unit I had in my parents' home, so I had a variation of this setup in their basement, and that's where I sewed, and I kind of condensed that for my apartment right here. So this whole surface um, serves multiple functions. It's my side table, because it's the only side table I have next to my bed, so it's where I put my phone to charge and my glass of water before bed. Um, it's also where I work, where I've been working from home for the past three months. It's where I eat meals, it's where I do crafts, where I write letters to friends, and of course, where I sew. I'm composed of a tabletop, this five drawer unit, and two legs that hold up the unit on the other side. And something interesting to note is that the tabletop comes in different sizes and different finishes if you want a different look for your space. I chose plain white because I love the contrast of the white surface underneath patterns, and I find it really helpful when tracing out patterns. So at the end of the workday, when I'm getting started to work on a project, I put everything away. Even my mouse has a space to go. And then I pull out my sewing machine from the corner. I keep the sewing machine pedal and cable in the bottom drawer of the unit. And in the top drawer of the unit, I have all the other supplies that I need to have on hand to sew efficiently and quickly. The drawer organizers are also from Ikea. They're just simple black cardboard drawer organizers. What's great about them is I can just pick up one of these drawer organizers and I have all my supplies. I can go and sew in another room or move it to my bed and sew on top of my bed or onto my ironing board and that way I have all the things I need for a project. How I organize this drawer is pretty basic. Um, it doesn't have all sewing stuff because I needed room for my desk things as well, but I've got rulers, scissors in the back, zippers and boning back there as well. Then up at the front I have thread snips, uh, chalk for marking, measuring tape, a few needles on a needle book at hand. I have many other packs of needles, but I keep one of each kind of needle accessible at all times. That way I just don't have to go through a bunch of supplies to find the thing I need at any particular time. And then I also have my threads. So I've got basic uh, white cotton thread, black cotton thread, white linen thread, white silk, black silk, and then some basting threads. And I like to use bright colors for basting because I feel like that makes it easier to pull the basting stitches out. I'll also keep here the threads for whatever project I'm working on at the moment. Um, so right now I'm doing some kind of embroidery on a corset, so I've got my embroidery floss here. I also have my wax, which I use to wax my linen threads. It's a historic practice and it makes your threads stronger for hand stitching. And I have my pins. I'll use these pins to get dressed in historical clothing and when I'm sewing, of course. It's really handy to have all the stuff I need at uh, arm's reach. I can easily pick this up 
put it beside me, get to work, and I have everything here that I could possibly need to start working. So as I mentioned before, every piece of furniture in my space needs to be a multi-use piece of furniture. And other than sewing items and storage, this uh, drawer unit has a lot of functions. So as you saw before, I have my easily at hand sewing, sewing and stationary supplies up at the top. And then in the level below, I use the same drawer organizers. I cut out a piece of black cotton velvet fabric to line them and I use this to sort out my jewelry. This way my jewelry is easily accessible. Um, it's not really organized very well here, but I know what I have and I know where everything is. And having it in the organizers prevents them from just kind of splooshing around all over the place. In this drawer I actually keep my socks and underwear. Um, it, I like having these kinds of things close to my bed because I get dressed in this area. And then the bottom two drawers are in progress sewing projects. You'll also notice I like to keep all of my in progress sewing projects together in one Ziploc bag if I can. Um, this one, for example, I have different pattern pieces cut out. I have a mock up in here. I'm kind of franken patterning two patterns together. And I didn't want to lose any of my pattern pieces, so I put them all into a Ziploc. That's the same for this one here too. As you can see, there's a few different Ziploc baggies down there. It's just nice to keep all the little notions together, all the pattern pieces together. What's interesting about this method too is I really only have two drawers and some other discretionary storage in my room for in-progress projects. And this actually, I find that it limits the amount of projects that I start. I'm much more motivated to finish something um, before I start another thing because I don't have that much space to put things. I also take advantage of the underside of my desk for storage. So I have here some shipping supplies, a canvas bag with some larger Victorian and Edwardian skirts that I wear pretty regularly, so I don't like storing them away, and they're also quite large, plus the cable clutter. Does that ever go away? But the best part is this small trash can. So this is actually designed for use in bathrooms, but it's just right for holding my scraps, and it's got a nice little handle on it too. It's a pretty slim design, and then once it's full, I empty out the scraps. I'll bring them to a place to be recycled, like H&M, they'll recycle fabric scraps. And then I'll also go through and see if there's anything I can save that I can use for a future project. I can turn the scraps into stuffing, or I can save any larger pieces and turn them into patchwork. And it's always great to save fabrics from your projects in case you need to make an alteration or repair later on. I also very conveniently have this built-in wall shelf up here and I use this basket to store some of my lesser used sewing supplies. It's also a great surface for my Janet Arnold books. Unfortunately, they're too large to fit anywhere else, so they have to stay up here. But I keep my needles, all um, lace collars, other scissors, random things like chains, grommets, other measuring tools, fray check, glue sticks. Uh, some lesser used notions are stored inside this little basket. I also have um, a magazine organizer up here and right now this is just kind of overflow for some larger patterns. Um, but mostly these are the patterns that I put here that are on my to-do list, my upcoming. So I had wanted to make this uh, riding habit earlier this year and then the whole event schedule got delayed, so I figured I wasn't going to start a wool riding habit in the spring. I can just wait for the fall and work on this, but I wanted to keep it out anyway because this is going to be a project that's going to take a long time. Same thing for my robe la Française. I was actually supposed to fly to Paris today with some girlfriends. Um, we were going to go to Fête Galant, and I was going to make this dress. Um, that's also been delayed, so this is kind of on pause, but I'm still keeping it in my easily accessible upcoming patterns magazine holder up here on the ledge. And then actually this box in the middle just holds wigs, fake hair, and hair pieces. If you've done historical costuming or, or cosplay or dress up, you may be familiar with wigs and crazy hair pieces and accessories, and that is always in this box. It is so great and convenient to have this easily accessible some of these things in here are very simple, just like fake braids that I'll add to my hair on a daily basis. So it's nice to be able to have them um, accessible. And on top, I've just got some sewing themed decorations, my favorite of which 
is this tiny sewing machine model. I got this at an estate sale for a few bucks. I guess it's made for dollhouses, I'm not sure, but you can move the hand crank and it moves the mechanism, or you can also move the foot pedal, but it's a little rusty, so I try not to, to mess around with it too much. But she's super cute. This brings us to the other point of um, using the things that you have as decor in your small space. So not only are you storing items, you're also using items as display objects so that you don't have to buy decorations and try to store your things. You can do both things at once. And for a great example of that, I'm going to turn the camera around and show you my bookshelves, which are on the other side of the room, which do double duty of storage and display. So the centerpiece of this unit is this pretty cheap television that I got from Target. And then what's flanking it and what's underneath it are the Billy bookcases from Ikea. Um, I love the Billy bookcase. I have this in my old childhood bedroom and I just had to get it again for my new space because in my experience, it's the only bookshelf that is wide enough, but not as deep as other shelves. So it's just, it's perfect for books and fitting a few knickknacks in. Um, it's perfect for narrow spaces. As you can see, there's really not much room between my bed and the bookshelf. So anything that's stuck out a little bit more than this, I'd be just scraping my limbs against every single day. So I needed something that wasn't so deep. And these units are only 11 inches deep. At the bottom shelves of the unit, I have some boxes that are very important. First things first, let me put away my work laptop and show you how I do that. Got a little ledge right on top of the box and I can slip my laptop in and it's out of sight, out of mind. These are also Ikea boxes. They fit perfectly inside the Billy shelf. Inside all these boxes on this side are my sewing patterns. So I can easily take a box out and I've got all my sewing patterns sorted by time period because I mostly focus on historical sewing. So it's really important for me to have some kind of time period organization. Then on some shelves where there's a little bit more room, I got this slimmer version of the same box. And on this one, I've got all of my buttons. I don't know how I got so many buttons and buckles. Um, I think these have just found their way to me over many estate sales and people bequeathing them to me and cosplays that never were. But uh, it's great to have all of my buttons in just one space. There's an added benefit of kind of limiting your storage area for a particular thing to a small box like this is that I know I can't get any more buttons other than what'll fit in this box. Um, if I want to buy new buttons, that's great. I sometimes will buy packs of antique buttons on eBay because I like to collect them, but they're pretty small. Um, I probably won't go to an estate sale and buy all the buttons I see. I've been there, done that, filled this box up with that. And now kind of, it allows me to check my purchases and make sure, do, am I really getting something that I need? Am I really getting something that I have room for? And underneath this box, is another box of patterns. These boxes fit patterns in quite well. I have them laying sideways and a few of the taller patterns kind of standing up on the side, but I'm able to pull everything out and see what everything is. I've got some retro, some turn of the century patterns here. How fun. I just, I like to be able to take out my patterns easily and be inspired by them. If I'm looking for a quick project, it's great to have my patterns easily accessible. Again, this is something that I didn't have in my past sewing space. I had to dig through storage to get to my patterns, and it just meant that I didn't ever want to get to my patterns. And this box has all of my oversized patterns. Most of these are historical patterns. If you're familiar with historical sewing, there's a lot of patterns that just come in larger packs or weird sizes because they're from independent pattern companies. And again, I find that they fit perfectly fine inside these cardboard boxes from Ikea. At the bottom of this bookshelf, I have all of my costuming and sewing books. Um, and then I've got in this black box over here. They are a little bit tricky to pull out of the shelves, but I like the snug fit. In here I have all of my trims, ribbons, millinery flowers, twill tapes, etc. And boy, is there a lot of it. Try to sort it out by color, and then I have like some larger packs 
of things that have come. They're still in their spools and they'll stay in their spool. And in this last box, I actually have seen some overflow storage of unfinished patterns, mock-ups, or scraps from past projects that I want to keep. I love saving scraps from past projects in case I need to do an alteration or um, fix anything in the garment. And also where I keep my big spool of cotton cord for piping. So you may be wondering where do I keep my fabrics and boy do I have a lot of fabrics and that is what the underside of my bed is for. It's full of these bins and each bin is a different type of fabric. Um, so this bin is silks, velvets, and rayons. That bin is cottons and linens. The one behind it is polyester, synthetics, and more costumey fabrics. Underneath my bed, I also have a tin for my lace trims. Some of these are antiques from eBay. I love rescuing cheap lots of mismatched lace trims. Maybe I'll use them. Maybe I'll just look at how beautiful they are. Either is fine with me. And I also have a bin for all of my different colors of thread. Again, because I don't need every color all the time, it's nice to keep it hidden away and out of sight. On this side of the bed, I have a bin with all of my woolens. I like keeping fiber types together because since I do historical sewing most of the time, I'm very picky about fiber content. Um, so when I'm going to start a dress for a new time period, I know exactly what bin to go into. But here, for instance, I have my bin for cottons and linens. I find it really helpful to use these clear bins. These happen to be from Ikea as well. Um, it was just a coincidence that they happen to fit under the bed perfectly. Having the bins here also encourages me to put fabrics away after I'm done using them. And they allow me to check my stash before I order more fabrics. So I know exactly what I have and I know how much of it because I can look and just see from the side how much of the fabric is in the bins. Having all of my garments by time period sorted together makes getting dressed for an event so quick and easy. I don't have to rummage around for all my skirts over there and my dresses are there and my shoes are there. Well, I do keep the shoes separately. But in this case, I have accessories, undergarments, and various different Victorian dresses all together so I can mix and match all the pieces in here and I have exactly what I need. And if I'm going on an event in this case, I can just take this whole suitcase with me and I'm ready to go. So the only pieces of historic clothing that I store separately are my chemises. Um, shifts, camicha, chemise, whatever you want to call it for whatever time period you're doing, um, costuming for. I love making these and I love wearing them as pajamas. So I keep all of them here, all of my nightgowns, folded up in my pajama bin in the, the unit underneath the television. I'm very lucky to have a closet space. And while I don't use the closet for sewing or costume storage for the most part, I wanted to share some tips and tools on how to maximize a small closet space. So the first tip, the fastest, easiest, cheapest thing you can do to get your closet organized is to invest in these slim velvet hangers. First of all, they're much less bulky than your traditional plastic hanger, so they take up much less space and you can scrunch up your clothes and fit much more um, in the space of 10 hangers than you would in the space of 10 traditional chunky plastic hangers. Second of all, if you have these kinds of chiffon, delicate type clothes like I do, the velvet of the hanger will actually provide some grip and keep your clothes from falling to the floor. Third, you'll also notice that I have my clothes organized by type and color. So I have dresses, then blouses, and then back there I have skirts, blazers, and jackets. And further, everything is organized by color. Um, it's also interesting to see that I kind of wear the same colors. So I have lots of black, dark blue, dark green, these kinds of dark reds and florals and purples, and then even the blouses follow the same trends. And you can see I love a fun sleeve. I love statement sleeves. Um, this is what I wear to work. This is where, what I wear on a daily basis. And having all of my clothes organized by color and type just makes it so easy to get dressed. I know exactly where everything is. And then when I'm finished with doing the laundry, I know exactly where to put stuff back. So it's not such a hassle to put things away. Now I do have this awkward nook in my closet, which I've actually utilized to store hats on these little command hooks. It also encourages me to wear them more often because they're easily accessible. Up at the top I have shoe storage and in the top right hand corner I keep my historical shoes. They're kind of tucked in that nook 
They're accessible, but they're not the first thing I'll grab for. And then I have boots and regular shoes. And on top of the boot box pile, I have a priority mail box for my Victorian bonnet, and then resting on top of that, my 18th century hat. I was very lucky to find this super skinny hamper, so it fits perfectly in this narrow space in my closet. Um, and it's also just the right size, so when it's filled up, that's about a load of laundry, and that's how I know it's time to do laundry. And then right next to it, I have my reproduction Victorian boots from American Duchess, perfectly stowed away. So you may have noticed the dress form that is over on that side of the room. Another example of having something that's functional, but decorative at the same time. So I've just finished sewing this linen apron, and I just really wanted to decorate the dress form with it. If I'm not using the dress form for any particular project, then I just like throwing some random pieces or full costume on it. Um, try to tie the colors in with the decor of my room, just because it's fun and it looks much nicer than having a plain undressed mannequin. You'll also notice over there that I have um, the iron that I use. So if I'm going to be ironing, I usually move the dress form out of that corner and instead put it in this corner so it's more out of the way. And in fact, I do a lot of draping in this corner too, just because there's more room here. And I'll move the ironing board and stretch it out over there. Bonus points, the cat loves to sit on the ironing board. She loves to sit on the window too, so she's got a special little blanket over there. What a good cinnamon loaf. Thank you for watching my tiny bedroom slash sewing studio sewing alcove video. Please leave a like and comment down below with what is your favorite tip that you learned from this video for working and crafting in small spaces. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and have a great day.